is section 9-08, the sine rule for angles. Now, the previous one was the sine rule, and it was just looking at lengths, and now we're looking at angles. There's no real difference except the unknown now is an angle. So it says, find example 18, find angle Z correct to the nearest degree. So we have the lengths, but we're missing one angle this time. So we've got We've got a degree, an angle, and we've got the length on the opposite side. So that's good. We can use the sine rule if we've got another length without an angle or another angle without a length. And in this example, we don't have the angle, but we do have the length. Now, we can use the ratios that we have for the sine rule of sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Or as we saw previously, A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Now, the solution, look for the two sides and the angles opposite them. Now, remember, we also learned that 121 degrees is, is looks like the largest angle in the triangle, so we're expecting 38.5 to be the longest side. Because 28.6 centimetres is less than 38.5, we're expecting this angle here to be less than 121. Look for two sides and the angles opposite them. So we've established that. Now they started like this, but there's no need to start like that. They've put here Z, little z over sine z equals uh, 38.5 over sine 121. But you could have just started like this. Just flip the whole thing at the beginning. It says inverting both sides so that Z is in the numerator. It's better to have the unknown in the numerator because it's a lot easier, a little bit easier to resolve as we go through. So rather than start like this, you can just start like this. Just start with the angle on the top, where we've got sine A over A equals sine B over B. Okay, so we put all the numbers in, and we've got sine Z equals 28.6 sine of 121 degrees over 38.5. And then using the calculator of sine to the minus 1 of this number, right, of all that, leave it as it is. You don't, don't knock it down to a, to a uh, decimal yet. Just leave everything like that. Use the sine to the minus 1 key, or the shift sine and put that in, and then you'll get an angle of 39.55 degrees, and that's approximately 40, because it says to the nearest degree. Okay, so we've established that that's 40. We expected it to be less than 121, which it is. Example 19, find theta correct to the nearest minute if it is an obtuse angle. Okay, so they've set it up like that. We've got 25, and we've got opposite that is 100. And we've got 200, and opposite that is theta. So it looked like we can use the sine rule, plus the section is on the sine rule. Now, in a test, it's not going to be like that. Generally, they won't tell you to use the sine rule. Okay, but we can see we've got an angle, and we've got an opposite length. We've got an angle, an unknown angle, and we've got an opposite length. Okay, so they started like this. Again, I would just start like that. Just remember sine A over A equals sine B over B. So it's sine of theta divided by 200. Sine of theta divided by 200. Sine of 25 divided by 100. And that resolves down to sine of theta equals this. Now, the, I don't think there's a need to go to this step here. Just use the calculator and use your sine to the minus 1 and put all of that in. Don't go to a decimal first. Just put all of that in, and then you'll get 57.697 degrees. Make sure your calculator's in degrees. Now, the question was, correct to the nearest minute if it is an obtuse angle. But theta is obtuse, so theta equals 180 minus that angle. And the question says to the nearest minute, so it's 180 minus the angle, which is 122.3027. So this portion, this part here, is 18 minutes, 9.77 seconds. And it's said to the nearest minute, so that's approximately 122 degrees, 18 minutes. Now this is a bit confusing, I would imagine, because it tells us the obtuse angle. So what is this? If this is an answer, why doesn't it match that? Well, let's have a look what this triangle could also look like. And what we need to do is to look at it and you see at which point could it pivot. We're given all, these, this, all this information, that's got to be 200, that's got to be 25 degrees, that's got to be 100, but can we construct another triangle that would meet those, that criteria there? Okay, let's see if we can. And how about this one? So I just copied and pasted that down to here. Now what I've done is, this length from this point to E is not defined, so it could be as long, it could be any length. So I've extended all the way up to here, and I'm pivoting around F, because we know that's 100. They told us that must be 100. Well, it's still 100 if we put it over there. That would be an isosceles triangle, this particular end here. So basically, if you pivot it from here, 
this 100 is going to come around there on an arc and it's going to stop there. It's also going to hit the line. So the new triangle with an acute angle here, here it's an obtuse angle, but you can also draw it with an acute angle and keep the same dimensions because that would be still 100, that's still 200, and that's still 25. But theta gets shifted up to here and that's an acute angle. You can see it's less than 90. So let's see what that triangle would look like. Okay, the triangle would look like that. It's the bigger triangle here, and then we can remove... We're going to remove this, and we're going to put it up to here. That 100 stays the same, but now it's that length, not this one, though that still is 100. We're looking at the bigger triangle, and this E would come up... That point E would come up to there. So let's do that. I'm going to get rid of that E. I'm going to move theta, and we're going to get rid of this line. Okay, and then it's going to look like this. Here we go. So we've been told that's still 25, that's still 200, that's still 100. And theta, here it's acute, so that would that be that answer. And the question, though, was the obtuse angle, and that would be drawn like that, at that angle there. Now, the previous example was a great example of the ambiguous case when there are two possible answers. When we use the sine rule to find an angle, it is possible to find both an acute angle and an obtuse angle as solutions. Likewise, there could be two possible triangles, one acute angle, the other obtuse angled. However, the obtuse angle triangle may not be possible. We need to check that the sum of the angles in the triangle is not greater than 180. Example 20. In triangle DEF, the angle D is 42 degrees. E, D, F. It's 42 degrees. Okay, D is 5 centimetres and F is 7 centimetres. So D is opposite the angle D, that's 5. And small f is opposite the angle f, and that's 7. Find the angle f correct to the nearest degree. So we have to find this angle here. Okay, now as we saw in the previous example, you can also, let's just jump ahead here, you could also construct this triangle that meets the same dimensions that were given. Now I think it's a good idea to try to work out where it could be pivoting. Now if we're given this length as 5 here, and we've given that length as 7, and they want us to work out f correct to the nearest degree, can you, we, we don't know, this is undefined, this one, df. But this could pivot at E. It could swing like a pendulum. It could be either here or it could be over here. Just imagine it on an arc, just swinging up to here. If it swung to here, it'd still be five. But this angle F is now obtuse. Okay. And if it's like, a draw, like this is drawn, it would be acute. So these are the two triangles. This is the one that's drawn here. And this would be the one if it was obtuse. And the way we got to this triangle was we got that line and we pivoted it at E and just swung it around to here. Just think of it like a crane and it's got a weight on the end and it just swings around. And then we got that there. So it's still five. But it's going to be a different angle inside here. So let's see how we'd calculate that. Now we're going to use the sign rule. It says draw a rough diagram. We drew a diagram. Now I've got the sign rule. Again, they've started like that, but we're after an angle. So you might as well just start as an angle. So we've got the sign of this angle divided by 7. That's there. And the sine of 42 divided by 5. Now you put that in the calculator and use the sign of the minus 1 button on that. Make sure your calculator's in degrees and you'll come up with 69.5181 dot, 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 dot degrees, and that's approximately 70 degrees because it says near, nearest degree. So that's 70 degrees. But F could be obtuse. So it could also be 180 minus 70. It could be 110. And the way you check that is the third angle of the obtuse angle triangle is we've got to add everything up. So we know that there is an angle 42. That did not change. We were given that. But now we've, we've, the obtuse angle has come up to 110. Now we've got to make sure that when you, we know that there's 180 in a whole triangle, is there enough degrees left to make that an angle? Let's see. 110 plus 42 is 152. So this could be 28. Okay, so that, this, this, this solution could exist. And that's what they're saying here. Checking the third angle, they've just done 180 minus 42 and minus 110 to find out what that angle is. If that angle is positive, then it's okay and the obtuse angle solution is possible and they've said it's 70 is one answer, which is the acute one, or 110, which is the obtuse one. But just always make sure that you double check, you add up all the internal angles and make sure that they don't exceed 180.
Let's have a look at B. In triangle LMN, LMN, angle M is 130, LN is 15 centimetres, LN, which is the small m, and LM is 7, and that's going to be a small n. Find the angle N correct to the nearest degree. Okay, B, draw a rough diagram. Okay, it was the same with the previous one as well. Draw a rough diagram, and we've drawn it, and we're using that criteria there. Now, we need, we're using the sine rule. Okay, that's the whole idea here, is that is the, there's a possible ambiguous case or not. So we're going to check. So we're going to find the angles. So we want to put the sines on the top. So we've got sine A over A equals sine B over B. So here the sine of N over 7 equals the sine of 130 over 15. We get that. We use the sine to the minus 1 button on all of that. And we go to this, and it says to the nearest degree. So that's approximately 21 degrees. So we've found N is 21 degrees. But it says, but N could be obtuse. Now, if N was obtuse, that would be 180 minus 21, which is 159. Now, is that a possible triangle? Could we draw another triangle with these dimensions and have N as 159? Well, we can already see the issue, can't we? We've got 180 degrees in a whole triangle. We're calling that 159. They told us that's 130. We've already exceeded 180. Now, they did it here the same as they did in the previous one, except I think there's an error here. It says, checking the third angle of the obtuse angle triangle, they've got angle L, this angle up here, must be 180. It shouldn't be minus 42. That should be minus 130. So minus 130. We've said that that could be 159 if there was an obtuse angle, was po if an obtuse angle was possible. So that should be 130, which is showing us that it, we're subtracting, we're getting into negative territory here. It's not negative 21, it's a lot bigger than that, but it's impossible to have a negative angle. Therefore, the obtuse angle solution is not possible and we must take only the acute angled one. We can't draw another triangle with those dimensions and have N as obtuse. That's what it's saying. Okay, here's the exercise, the related exercise, 9-08, the sine rule for angles. So all of these questions are related to the sign, using the sine rule to find angles. And 3, 4, and 5 as well. Don't forget to use these margin hints here. Example 19 is going to help you here, and example 20 should help you here.